Greg Cazillo, Fro Knows Photo. Dot com. I am going over the library filter at the top and also this toolbar here in the bottom on Adobe Lightroom 3 today. Now, to turn them on, first step, obviously, we need to be able to turn them on and know how to do that. So, we go to our view menu and we show filter bar. We can turn that on or off and we could also hide our toolbar. Now, as you see, we also have shortcut keys, which is the T to turn off the toolbar, and also the forward slash, which is the one above the enter key, to turn on and off the library filter. Now, let's start with the toolbar at the bottom. These are all actions for the most part. Uh, by the way, let's actually start off a little back. Let me back up here. Back, 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 back up. Okay. Number one. See this little thing over here on the bottom right hand corner down here, way, way, way down here in the corner? Okay. If you can change your toolbar content by hitting this little triangle and then choosing what you would like to show on this bar. So first you turn whatever you want on. If for example you don't want to use the painter, then turn it off so that it disappears. But I'm going to go over each of those today so that you'll understand how to use them. So, now that I have everything turned on, and the one next to it is my thumbnails. And those sizes are pretty obvious. Just a slider to make it bigger, smaller, all that good stuff. Now, far left, grid view. And it even shows me my shortcut keys. As I said before, I'm a big fan of using shortcut keys, both for Photoshop as well as Lightroom. So I always want to be using those shortcuts. But, if you don't, you can just hit this little button down here. Grid view. Next one is our loop view, and that will take an image and put it in the loop view, which means bigger. And if we G for grid view again, say we pick a couple pictures here. So we pick all the one, two, yeah, we pick a couple. All right, now the next one is XY, which is compare. Compare means we look at two photos side by side. This is really great for looking at pictures when you want to compare focus, when you want to compare movement or uh, whatever, or maybe faces if you're editing some portraits and one is good but the other one's not as good, you just hit the little X key right here which would deselect the photo or you can add or remove ranking with the stars or you can reject it or set it as the pick if you'd like to use the flags instead. So you have a select and you have a candidate. So I'm going to hit that X and then we're going to be able to see the two of these which will be our next step. All right, so that's a nice, really cool option. I use it a lot. Now, the next one is Survey View. Survey View lets us look at all the photos that we have selected at one time. Then we can hit the little X to remove it. If we want, we can hit Control-Z to undo. Okay, and then we can also use our Control key. See how my Control key, when I'm hovering on a photo, changes to a... Uh, a little uh, crosshair thingy, I guess that's what you would call it. So instead of going down here to the bottom to hit the X, you can just hold the Alt key and just click anywhere you want in the photo and it'll disappear. So that way works really well for me. I do that a lot and instead of hunting for the little X, I can just go back. Again, let me show you once more. Hold down the Control key, click anywhere in the photo and it will disappear. Okay, and there's the two that I have chosen. So, the survey view, really, really cool way to sort and find and uh, get through your photos. Next one, hit the G key to go back to my grid view. And uh, we have the paint painter tool. That's for painting on keywords and going, you, you start with your keywords and you assign your keywords. And then you paint, 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 paint. Um... Capture time if you want to sort differently. Now, these right here are all for adding information or adding the filters or tags or your uh, flags, your all that stuff to an individual image or set of images. All right. Um, adding stars, adding colors. Uh, this is for rotating an image. This is for going to the next image. And this will play an impromptu slideshow. So that is our toolbar at the bottom. Now, filter bar, filter bar, this is an awesome one. The easiest one to use 
is text. Okay, uh, you choose the text key, right, the text word here, and then you can choose your field or any searchable field. Uh, file name, copy name. I use file name a lot when people send me selections of images that need to be uh, that they need. They want to be sent back to. Say I have a client and I shot 500 images, but they wanted uh, 50 of them. You know, I'll go through and I'll just type in the names or the numbers here and say I wanted number 009. Okay, and I just type in a name. Yep, and there's my nines, and there's a picture that I want, and so I can process just that picture. So it makes my life a little easier just to do that. Hit the little X here. It will remove that uh, filter and it goes back to everything. All right, so really works well. These will change depending upon which of these fields that you have selected, but um, really awesome, quick way to sort and find stuff. Next thing is attribute. Now, this sorts by flag status, whether you have a flag and don't have a flag, rating. Uh, all of my one star images are images that I have sent to a client. Uh, my zero star images, which I don't think I have any in this group. No, nope, oh, I'm wrong. There are two. Um, are images that uh, I didn't even send to a client at all, but I still kept them just in case. Uh, but that, again, that's my method. You might have another one. Then my five star images are my best ones. Sometimes portfolio images or, or final images that I've sent off to the client. Next thing, color ranking. The first thing that I do with colors with a red label, those are ones that need to be edited, usually in Photoshop or outside of Lightroom. Um, there, I think there's only one or two here that I see, but that's what that's for. You turn that on, and we see no yellow, we see no yellow, no green, we see and none of those, but we do have a red. So we just turn that on and off. And it shows those. By the way, uh, one through five on your number pad or across the top of your keyboard, one through five is your stars. And then six is red, seven is yellow, eight is green, nine is blue, and then your purple, white, and gray do not have, I'm sorry, unlabeled. Oh, I forgot. This is the cust that's right, this is a custom color. Not the purple does not have a number. But then um, this is a custom label. In other words, you would uh, make up your own. If you would like to type it in, you can do that through the metadata panel. Right. Where is that? I know it's in here somewhere. I'm not going to spend the time to find it today. Uh, but I know it's in the meta. There it is. Metadata panel right there. Label. First one. You might have to hit this drop down to show, to show everything. And then label. Okay, label. Next one, uh, kind of pic kind of image. Uh, first one is going to be master photos, and then virtual copies, and then the last one is videos. If you're importing videos in a Lightroom, which you can do, a lot of DSLRs, Canons, Nikon's, a lot of these are shooting a lot of that uh, video, and so being able to sort that and find that all in one place is really nice. Next thing, metadata. Really, really cool. It, can sh it shows me what lenses I was I shot with, or an unknown lens, what cameras I shot with, date or month. Really nice way to be able to find stuff. And of course, labels or keywords. Uh, you can choose a lot of different things in here, like GPS location, no GPS location, because I have my GPS, my GP1 for my cam my cameras, and so that works out really well. Uh, again, you can sort or, or, or find stuff by all of these options in here. Really nice. Obviously, none is for getting rid of everything. Now, last two things. Number one, camera info. Okay, you can save presets just like you can for your metadata or your develop. You can save a preset if you use them a lot by uh, for for this filtering. So that works really nice. Last one is this little lock button. This little lock button allows you to. Go to, a, say, a three-star or higher, and then when you have the three-star or higher, you have the three-star or higher chosen here, you can then hit this little lock button. What that little lock button does, lock or unlock, you can see it change there and move. Uh, what happens is, is when you have it locked and you go from folder to folder, this bar is not going to change. 
okay so it's automatically going to show me all of my photos that are three stars or higher no matter where I go in between my collections or inside of any of my folders okay when that little lock is turned off then when I switch it's going to go back to nothing and so you will need to go then go back to metadata or I'm sorry go back to attribute and click on that three star again so that's what that little lock button does and as you see it's defined as if locked the filter will not disable when changing sources so that's Adobe's label of it but again that's that's what that's for really really cool option use it once in a while not all the time I'm kinda hot and cold with certain things uh, and that's definitely one of them as of late I've been using it a little more though um, because I kind of forget about stuff and then I go back and use it again. So it's kind of funny. Greg Cazillo, fro knows photo.com. Any comments, questions, or anything, send me an email, comment on it. Love to hear them. Join us in the forum. Uh, also, you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Thanks. See ya.